Hello, I'm Melissa the Crafty Ginger. Today I'm going to show you part two of the advanced macrame wall hanging. And this is, you know, definitely advanced, I would say, but just persist, you can do it. These are all basic knots. Um, I've gone a little bit further from video one just so I can, you know, I'm going to do, I already did this half and then I'll show you how to do it the other half. So it's going to be the exact same thing. And then I put the fringe on this side. I'm going to go through all of this, how to, how to do that. Um, first of all, someone had a question about how long my stick was. It is almost exactly four feet. So just so you know, um, kind of how I have my spacing, you know, you could certainly do something longer, um, or just if you want something shorter, you could make these shorter, you know, so you can really adapt it depending on how long your, your stick or your rod, whatever you end up using is. Um, so here I've cut a bunch of fringe. I'm going to show you how I like to do that and give you the measurements here. These are, these are about nine inches and I cut them a little bit long because I'm, I'm going to go back through and trim these up right here. The way I like to do it is like just grab them in groups of two and then trim them so that they look really uniform. And then you're also going to first, first of all, you want to brush it out before you trim it. So these are kind of leaning this way because they have a light twist in them, but just keep brushing, getting in there until it's really combed out. And this is going to take a little bit of time, but this cotton rope has a light twist to it. It won't take you, you know, too long and it usually doesn't twist back up either. So you just want to really continue brushing it out. So I wanted to show you how I like to cut my trim. Here's some of my scrap rope here. Um, get something that, you know, just a piece of cardboard. This is for making pom poms. And then I just like to wrap it around like this. Then when you're done, let's see, that's almost, almost perfect. Um, take it off Oops. like that. And then just cut it right in the center. So then you have all your pieces of ropes. I said this in the last video, but I have 26 pieces here. I'm also going to have the exact same over here, 26 pieces. And then at the end, we're going to put fringe in three pieces of fringe in each one of these little loops right here. So once we kind of bring these together, I'll show you how to do that. Okay. I've cut my ropes here. These are, um, 15 feet long and you need four ropes. Now I would say this is one of the most complex parts of the process, but this is very similar to one of my keychain videos that has the same pattern where it kind of zig, you know, crisscrosses. So what you're going to do is take your outside cord on the left side and the neighboring cord next to that, you're going to put that over the tail over it and bring it through the hole you just created there. So you probably know how to do this clove hitch knot if you're watching an advanced video, but just so in case it's confusing. So take, and you have to do it twice for each rope, put the tail over and draw it through the space. And you're just working toward the center. So you, in this case, you're only going to have three ropes on the left side. You're going to have three ropes on the right side, and then they're going to intersect and you're going to keep going. Okay, now I'm to the center. I'm going to stop right there and go to the other side. This is my most outer cord on the right side. I'm going to take its neighbor. I'm going to hold this kind of at a downward slant. And the tail goes through that space. And again, so you don't can get confused. I always like to hold the lead cord just in my left hand all the time. Just hold it down and just hold it there. So you know which one you're going over. Okay. Three cords on the left and three cords on the right that you're working with these clove hitch knots. Okay. Now we're to the center. Now we're going to continue on this side. I went down the left side. For symmetry, I think I'm going to go down the right side on this one. So this is your lead cord on the left. You leave that one out. So pull that out for a second and then just keep going with your three cords on the left hand side. Okay. 
The only thing confusing about this diamond shape pattern is that you have to work, you have to work one side then the other side. You know, you can't do like all the left side. You have to do the left and then the right and the left and the right because it's a intertwining. Okay, now we have that X shape created there. I'm gonna take down this lead cord and your lead cord's always going to be in the front. So keep going with the three chords on the right hand side until you have a completed X. Be careful you don't pull these too tight. See, I just pulled mine a little bit tight and it kind of pulled it to the back. I want it to be pretty flat. Okay. Here's the last one on the right. <clears throat> Hope you can see this okay. Maybe I can kind of separate these for visual separation. Okay. Now I have completed X. Pull these out. You're not using these quite yet. Just for one minute. So I have six chords in the center. We're gonna do a left and a right-handed square knot with the six chords in the center with four as your anchor ropes and two as your working ropes. So make that L shape, and then your right cord goes over, behind the anchor cords, and through. The exact opposite for the right hand side, make a reverse L, the left hand cord goes over, behind all these cords, and through the space. Okay, that's it for, there's only one square knot in the center there. Now you're going back like this, and back like this. Okay, so I'm going to start on the left side. Again, working only three ropes until I get to the center. Okay, now the left. Bring your lead cord in front. Okay, now we're to a point again where we're gonna cross the lead cords. So now you're kind of at this point again. This is your left hand lead cord. Take that one out for a minute while you work this side. And this is the one completed um, diamond shape at this point. So um, if you need more instruction, I would watch it again. You know, this is a little bit trial and error. And, you know, this is an advanced pattern, so I assume that you kind of know some of these knots already, but um, I also have a keychain video with the same exact pattern. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side with my lead cord in front. So you're gonna complete this diamond shape. What do I have? Six times on the right hand side and six times on the left hand side. And then we're gonna be able to bring them together. So once, see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they're gonna just lay over like that. And then we're gonna bring them together here in the center. And this will be what the center piece looks like. That's the final for the center. Okay, let me show you how to do the fringe. You're just attaching the friends, fringe, fringe, excuse me, <laughs> with a lark's head knot. So take one of your kind of, how long is this? This is probably 35 inches. So just right next to this cord that's holding these together, you're gonna put another rope in here. And I'm going to keep this here. I'll just incorporate that with the fringe. You can see over here on this side, this is that piece of rope over here and it'll blend in once we brush it out. Okay, now right next to this rope, you're gonna tie it just with a regular overhand knot twice. 
and don't tie it super tight at first because you might be taking this out. We're gonna put all of our ropes on here and if we have space, cause we want it to be symmetrical to the other side. If we have 26 ropes and we have say like this much room left, we're going to tighten it up so that it's nice and tight. Okay, let me show you how to attach the fringe. For this, just find the center, put it over, pull the tails through. Just a regular lark's head knot for all of these. Repeat this 26 times. And then I just like to smush them over to one side so I know how many more I need. Okay, so keep going like that all the way. Okay, so I'm on the last piece on this side. So like I said before, you're gonna have six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six diamonds. And then you wanna end with it like this. And this is just so we can bring the ends together in a nice kind of ending. So I'm gonna finish this side. And you can bring this together however you want to. Um, I'm gonna show you how I did this on the piece that I showed at the beginning of video one, the pink one. That one was a mix of square knots and crown knots, but you might like it just with a little simpler pattern, so. Okay, now I have, just kind of straighten these out a little bit. See how these join together nicely? It's kind of like a nice little ending. Okay, so this is just gonna be a square knot left and a right. There's a left, just pull them together and pull your anchor, anchor cords down so they're nice and straight like that. Okay, so that kind of brings your piece together. Okay, in the center you have the left and right square knot bringing those together. Now we're gonna do a half hitch right here to bring these two pieces. These are the lead cords coming out from each side. We're gonna bring those together. I've showed this in my other videos, in my wall hanging videos. Um, but what you're gonna do is use this one as the lead cord and you're just gonna take the tail over it and then you're gonna switch them. Now this is your main cord, so pull down on it and then this one goes through this loop. So you don't have to do it like that if you just want, it's just to bring them together. That's all we're trying to do. So then we're gonna put fringe on here and we want the fringe to be, um, just attach it using a lark's head knot. So find the center, bring the tails through the center. So do that all the way up here. You're gonna do that all the way until they're finished. Okay, on the pink one, I'm gonna bring this to the back right now so I can show you what I did on the other one. I'm gonna show you how to do a crown knot. You do that with groups of four. I have a group of four here. You should be able to see like a neat little square when you lift the cord toward you. Toward you. So let me show you what that looks like. Just kind of pull on these ends and then see how this is making a square right here. So that's the crown knot. So I'm gonna show you one more time. Make an L shape with this next cord in front of it. And then make an L shape with this cord in front of it. L shape, this cord goes all the way through like that. So you're kind of just following it around in a square. It's complex. You don't have to do this. You can totally just skip this all together and do a twist, I think that would look just as cute, um, which would just be all left or all right square knots. Either way, it's gonna look finished and pretty. So continue doing that um, maybe 10 times, and then I just did, um, I just let them hang like that. So, finish your fringe here and here, and then let me show you where the fringe goes on this centerpiece part. So see these little loops right here that are coming down right here? You're gonna put the fringe right in there. 
with just a lark's head knot. So put it over that and pull your tails through. Tighten it up and push it down so you have room. And there should be three pieces of fringe on each little loop that I'm showing here. Okay, there's three on that one. Okay, when you're done with the fringe, you're really gonna wanna brush this out a lot and trim it up. The way I like to trim mine up is get something that you're gonna use for a, some type of measurement so your pieces are all kind of similar. Like I was just kind of going like that. So it's about one finger length for me and then anything further than that, I would just cut it off. So you really have to comb these out to get a nice fringe. And every time you move the piece, if you rehang it somewhere, you're gonna have to comb them out too. So, but it's not hard after you've done it the first time. So these ones, I'll show you how I do that. Just get up there kind of toward the knot. Be careful not to pull this part though, because you'll get little loops. So keep doing that. And these ones, I trim in groups of three. So I would just say, okay, I wanna cut it like right there and then I'd move on to the next group. And again, I cut it about right there. So just, they're all similar length. You don't have to use your finger, obviously. You could use a comb and say, I want it to be as long as the comb. Okay, so now we've finished both the side pieces and the center piece here. Um, the last piece, this is optional. To attach this, you could just use something simple, like um, you could hang it in the center, or you could just use one cord going across. But I'm gonna show you how I did mine. These are 15 feet lengths. You're gonna need three on each side. You need six ropes total for this. You're gonna attach this in a reverse lark's head knot. So instead of like normally, we would throw the rope over like this, you're gonna go like this, coming up from the back side. And the reason we're doing this is because at the end, um, after we've worked our pattern, we're going to flip it over. And you'll see what I mean. I probably should have scooted this one over. Okay, just tighten them up like that. Again, from the back side and over. I know it's opposite. Oops, this rope gets kind of tangly sometimes. Just tighten them up like you normally would. And the last piece. Okay, the reason I'm doing it like this is because it's really hard to work upside down. If I were to try to like go like this, it would be really hard for me to knot it. So um, now I'm gonna turn this around. Okay, so let me show you what's gonna happen. Once we're done making this piece, I'm gonna flip these over and they're going to be in the correct orientation. They're gonna be going up like that. Now turn your piece around. So pick it up. Okay, now we're working from the front of the lark's head knots. And all I'm gonna do here is a zigzag. So I'm just doing clove hitch knots, zigzagging all the way over here, all the way here, here, here. So do each rope twice, two clove hitch knots on each rope. I'm kind of giving, you know, I guess limit less instruction than I normally would just because this is an advanced wall hanging. I assume if you're tackling this project, you know something about macrame. But um, you know, if you don't, I, I still think you could get this. These knots aren't, they're not impossibly hard. And just, you know, you can take things out, you can modify it to make it easier for you. Okay, now we're gonna go back the other way. So you're using the same lead cord. This is gonna be the same cord going throughout all of them. Did that only once. And the purpose of doing each twice is just simply to, so they're not just draped over one time. You know, you, you wanna lock the knot in. Okay. I'm going to keep going with my zigzag pattern here. And just for kind of measurement purposes, 
you want to check where you're at. So on the last piece I did, I think I did 14 zigs and zags. So I did one, two, three, four, like that 14 times. I'll count those just to make sure. But um, the reason I'm telling you that is because the pink one was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. And I'll tell you how I sort of predicted how long it was going to be. I want, I think on this one, I want it to be a little bit shorter. So what I did was, of course, this is going to be flipped over, but this is going to be meeting in the center with these ropes right here. And so maybe I only want it to hang like that high above, which might be a good length. The other one I had it down here. So that's going to hang pretty high above. You need a pretty big wall space to accommodate something this large. So just keep that in mind. Okay, on the other piece I had 16 of these. So one, two, all the way down to 16. So just keep working this pattern, the zig and the zag, all the way. And I'd appreciate any um, rope suppliers in other countries. So I've had lots of questions in Europe, like where should I buy rope from and stuff. And of course, I, I don't know because I don't live there. So if you guys have a place that you purchase rope, it's, I, I don't know, maybe Etsy or Amazon or a hobby store that you like to go to in Europe. I've specifically had a lot of questions about Norway. Um, would you please comment below so that other people can find rope suppliers in your country as well? So just keep it going here. Okay, so once you get to the end of the hanging portion of this project, just do a gathering not to bring them together. And I, I left it kind of fringy, so that's how... That's how I finished mine, but please take this pattern and make it your own and do whatever you feel like, you know, looks pretty and suits your style. Uh, I really enjoyed making these. They're really fun and this rope is easy on the hands because it's nice soft cotton. This rope is from Nyroma Studio on Instagram at Nyroma Studio. You can also purchase through Etsy. And thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is crafty underscore ginger so I can see what you've been up to. Happy crafting.